guys, this is Nikki Lynn with blingactions.com. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial on how to use clipping masks inside of Photoshop. I'm going to be giving you a sample inside of Photoshop CS6, which is what I'm working with in today, but this will work in all elements of Photoshop. Um, not to be confused with Photoshop elements, but you can still do the clipping masks the same way inside elements. So whether you have Photoshop five, six, seven, or whether you have CS2 through CS6, all of these methods will work for you. We actually have these um, blogging templates. We have a few blogging templates available for free download at blingactions.com. Just click on the templates menu option and you will have an option there to try a free sample. We have one free sample as a blogging template and we also have one free sample as a storyboard template for printing. The storyboard templates actually come in a variety of different sizes and those are designed to give your customers choices for different print options. For a lot of people who are shooting digitally and then are just burning discs, this is a great sort of way to breach into offering your clients something outside of just a CD because a lot of clients wouldn't know how to create a storyboard. They also wouldn't know where to print a storyboard. So if you're looking to try to increase your sales, storyboards on the wall prints can be a great way to do that, a great way to start. Uh, the ones that come in the set are 8x10, 11x14, 15x30, and then there's a few other uh, various oddball sizes and some square options as well. The one I'm going to be demonstrating today is actually a blogging template, and I'm going to show you how to get images into the template and how to use the clipping masks. If you are interested in the storyboard template, the clipping masks and how you load the images inside of the template collection is going to work the same exact way. Um, but I'm just going to show a blogging sample today just because it's a smaller template and it's easier to work with for the sake of the tutorial. So what I have done here is I've opened up the Bling Free um, template that again you can find on the website blingactions.com and you'll notice over here I have my layers palette showing that you can see all the different layers and you can see where the images are going to go in. This template actually holds four separate images and then you have an option for text. If you don't want to add text you can simply just turn the little eyeball on and it will take the text off and you don't have to add text. If you want to add text you can simply just click on that um, layer, click on your text tool and then just implant it right here at the beginning of sample text. You can type in anything that you want to say. You can say beautiful baby you can highlight and you have full control over all of your font settings here. If you're looking for some fun fonts to kind of play with, hit defont.com, it's D-A-F-O-N-T.com, defont.com, and you can get lots of free samples there for different types of text. Um, gives you a great way to be able to play with it. There's also several other websites out there where you can actually purchase the text if you plan on ever doing selling or upgrading. Um, Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is I want to fill this with a newborn session that I did. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to open my bridge. If you have not yet checked out our bridge tutorial for Photoshop, I definitely encourage you to check that out. If at the time of this video it's not posted, it will be very soon because it's in the process of being uploaded as I am doing this tutorial. The bridge that comes along with Photoshop, if you have CS2 through CS6, then you have bridge. Elements also has bridge. Um, You'll be able to actually view your hard drive. You can scroll your hard drive by looking at my computer. Um, and then again, the, the other tutorial is going to have a lot of information on it, but this gives you the option to be able to just actually drag right into the program. So what I want to do here is I'm going to start up in the top left hand corner. You can see here this is called layer three. What I'm going to do is open up that bridge that I was just playing with a moment ago. Here it is. And I'm going to put this mom up here in the left hand corner. So what I'm going to do is just drag her right from bridge right into the program. You can see what's happened here is it's automatically opened it up. It's put her in here. All I'm going to do is resize this to fit inside of that corner. One thing that you're going to want to keep in mind is that in order to keep your images integrity to its original size, you have to make sure, and this is a very important thing, that you hold down on the shift button while you use your mouse to drag the image to the size that you want it. And basically what I've done here is just made it the size of the opening. I can make it a little bit larger and I'm going to show you why I can do that. 
Um, so I'm just going to sort of make this where I want it to go and I'm going to hit enter. Photoshop will automatically turn this into a clipping mask with the way that I've opened it, meaning that I could resize up or down. It's not going to control the integrity. I'm, I'm, I apologize. It's not going to change the integrity of the pixel resolution. It's going to maintain it, whether it's big or small. If I rasterize this layer, what will happen is if I go big and then go small and then go big again, it changes the pixels. So it's a really nice thing that this opens this as a rasterized layer. The next thing that I want to do now that this has been opened is I actually want to clip this image to this layer. So to do this it's super easy. All you're going to do is make sure that the image is highlighted and make sure it's located directly above the layer where you want to put it. So I want to put this on layer 3. So what we're going to do is highlight the actual image and I'm going to hold down on the option key and I'm going to click the button. You see that this little arrow comes up on earlier versions of Photoshop it almost looks like two circles with arrows so I'm holding down the option key on a Mac it'll be alternate key on a PC. When I click this what happens now I've let go I just held it down and clicked it this you can see this little arrow has shown up and what this has actually done is it has clipped this image into this space right here so now you'll notice if we go back over to the storyboard, I can blow this up a little bit for you. If we go back over to the storyboard, I can actually move this around and it's not going to move outside of that box where I have it. It's going to stay right inside that box. So now I can just sort of set it where I want to have it. And I think that looks perfect the way that that is. And now I'm going to go back to bridge and I want to fill this spot over here. So what I'm gonna do here, let's see which image I wanna put in there. Let's go with this one. So what I'm going to do here is this image is going to go into the top right, which is here. I'm just going to make sure that the image has been dragged so it's directly above layer 4, which is what I'm working with. I'm going to bring it all the way over to the side. And then what I'm going to do is, again, make sure it's very important you hold down the Shift button. And I'm just going to resize this to fit within that space. Once I have it where I want it, which right there is good, I'm going to go ahead again and hit down my option key on a Mac or alternate key on a PC. Right above, I want to make sure the image is highlighted and it's right above the space where I want to clip it to and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to clip that. Just like that. You do have to make sure that you accept the size once you have it sized, which I hadn't done. Um, okay, so I have this exactly where I want it to go and you'll see again I can move this around anywhere inside of this template and it's only going to stick to that one space. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there and hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to fill the bottom two spaces really quickly because again this is just a tutorial to show you how to use it. I, I want this to go into the bottom right hand corner so I am going to drag the image to the template which I did and then I'm going to drag it right above the opening where I want it to go. So in this case it's going to go over here in the bottom right and now I'm just going to go ahead and hold the shift button again because you want to make sure that you maintain the correct ratio. And then once I have it sized the way I want it I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to hold down on that option key and I am going to clip it into that space. And then again you can see it's going to st I can move it around and it's going to stay within this spot. Now the last space to fill is the bottom left, so I will go back to my bridge and I will choose this image here. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over and I am going to size this by holding my shift button down to the size of that square and hit enter when I'm ready. I'm going to hold, I already have it clipped here to the bottom left, so I'm going to go ahead and hit my option key and I'm going to clip it into that space and then I'm going to move this around. And now you'll see that this image is completely set to go. I could change the text here if I wanted to. Um, you also would have options if you were looking to want to change the actual background color. Um, if I wanted to change the background color all I would have to do is just pick the background, choose the, the paintbrush bucket and then go ahead and put in paint wherever I would want it to go. 
So in this case, it would be the bottom layer, background layer. And I just went ahead and I just filled that in with black paint. So now I have a nice black border. Um, and then if I wanted to add the text back in, I could just go choose a text layer here. So what we'll do is just choose the text tool. And we have to obviously not choose black. We would want to choose a different color. Let's choose just like a cream color. And then put your mouse down here again. And we can type in... The text color, if it doesn't change when you select this over here on the left, your text color is also located here at the top box. So let's go ahead and choose it there. We're going to choose. And then we'll go ahead and type beautiful baby. And we'll use the move tool and we will move this so it's where we want it to go. The last little step that I would recommend doing is if you're saving this for a blog or you're saving this for your website, my recommendation is to go to File, Save for Web. And this is great with the new Facebook policy as far as right now is concerned. They've changed all of the compression settings on Facebook so you know your images aren't looking as crisp as they should. This will actually change it so that your images will be nice and clear and crisp. What we want to do is when this box pops up, we want to choose JPEG, maximum quality at 100. We can actually um, decrease this size here. This says uh, 2200 by 2250 because it's a square. What we'll go ahead and do is we will just change this to 900 by 900. And we're going to choose BioCubic Sharpener because we want it to sharpen for the web. And then we're going to go ahead and click Save. When we click Save, we have this option here to save it wherever we want it to go. So I'm just going to default it to my November folder. So it says Free Bling. We can just call this Sample by Bling. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to save. And when you do this, the next step is to go to Facebook or to go to your blog, and you will actually be able to update this onto your blog. Um, it's already been saved for the web now at this point, and your template is set to go. You're all set to go. So all of the steps that I showed you in here today, this again is part of this free sample for the blogging template, but you also have options for um, wall storyboard. There's a free sample on the website for that too. Again, blingactions.com and just click on the template option for storyboard. Um, go ahead and try those out. And then we also have the collections that are available and all the clipping options and all of that will be exactly the same. If you have more, if you're in desire of having more information or you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one editing class with me, definitely check out the classes link because the classes link works very similar to this. You actually see my screen. We can chat back and forth. I have group classes and I have single private classes. Um, and we actually chat with each other. You can watch me edit. I can show you step by step how to use all the tools, what exactly is going on over here in the layers palette and all the actions. So definitely check that out if you have more questions. And head on over to blingactions.com to check out your free sample. Have a great day, guys.